Have you wondered what is a reverse shell, really? What are these weird symbols? How do you know if something bypassed your firewall and landed on your machine? First, let's have a quick intro about bind and reverse shells. When an attacker connects to a machine in this direction, he is trying to use a bind shell. Well, if it's the opposite, then it's a reverse shell. By nature, firewalls have rules to block TCP connections coming from the outside. So an attacker who will use a bind connection will get blocked. Since firewalls don't normally filter connections originating from user computer, attackers use reverse shells. Why the hell reverse shell formats are so complicated? Let's break down this simple payload. In Linux, everything is represented as a file. Whenever you try to open a connection, a TCP socket must be opened first. The user space application will write or read packets to that TCP socket. Since we need to represent this as a file, this network transaction is handled in DevTCP. Now that we have an understanding of this middle part, let's go to the surroundings. First, we need to understand three important concepts. These are streams, file descriptors, and redirection. By default, a Unix program has three streams open for it during startup. The first is standard input, which is used by the program to accept data. Data may come directly from user terminal or from another program. The second is the standard output, which used to print data to a display, which is typically a screen. The last one is standard error. This is used to get diagnostics or error messages from the program. Now that we know what are the standard streams, how do we represent them into files for access? This is where Linux file descriptors come into the picture. A file descriptor is a representation of a file handle, pipe, or TCP socket. These three numbers correspond to the standard streams. You can see them in the terminal in this path. You may also access them using redirections, which is our next topic. Redirections is a Linux feature that allows us to change the input and output devices of a program. For example, redirecting standard output to a file can be done in two ways. We can also include standard error if we want to. Going back to our reverse shell payload, we want to pass an interactive bash terminal. Then we want to enable standard input stream so we can type our commands. We also want to enable standard output and error stream so we can see the command output and capture any errors. <laughs> Lastly, we pass our interactive bash together with the three streams to a TCP socket. Now let's have a quick demo. Under normal circumstances, triggering a reverse shell from a victim machine will allow attacker to capture it from a listener and execute commands inside. Now let's see what happens if we don't include some of the streams. By disabling the standard error, we see that we cannot capture any of them. This makes it difficult in our enumeration process, such as checking the user permissions. If we disable the standard output, it makes it worse. We cannot see any of the command result. Lastly, odd thing happens when we disable the standard input. Typing inside the attacker terminal produced nothing. We only see an output if we type inside the victim terminal, which is something out of our reach. Knowing the importance of these streams will allow us to save time and troubleshooting certain scenarios, such as problematic reverse shells. There are a lot more examples with exotic formats, but the concept remains similar. Before we end, here's a simple trick to catch some reverse shell connections. We can check the TCP connections for unusual destination IP import. We can also see the bash program that was executed as well as the three standard streams we talked about. Of course, in real production environment, you will use more sophisticated tools such as web application firewall. You reached the end of our short video. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.